Hey everybody, it's Karen with Food and Family. I'm ready to start dinner, and tonight I'm going to make a meatloaf. I've had requests for meatloaf, and it is one of my husband's most favorite foods. So I'm going to show you how I do it. Now, I have just over a pound of ground chuck, and I'm going to add an onion to that, chopped onion. Now, I had some onion left over from another meal, so I'm just going to chop it up instead of wasting it. And I might not need everything that's on my board. Can you see what I'm doing? And um, so I'm going to add some onion, and we're going to spice it up and bake it up. Now, when we make meatloaf, my family, we prefer it with a brown gravy instead of the red sauce, tomato sauce, ketchup, whichever you use. Uh, it's just what we like the best. That was a half of an onion. Uh, it was a medium to large onion. That might be enough. I think I'm going to put just a little bit more, which is amounting to about a quarter of a cup of chopped onions. And I don't cook my onions ahead. I put them in raw because they're going to cook with the meatloaf when we put it in the oven. Now, I've got my oven on 425, preheating, so it's ready for me when I'm ready to put it in. How's your day been going? We have had a beautiful day today. It's been in the 50s, but it's been, been a nice day. Um, okay, so next I'm going to put in one raw egg. That's my but binder. I'm going to add some salt and pepper. I'm just going to eyeball it. It's not as much as you think. That may be, that may be about a half a teaspoon, if that much. About the same amount of pepper. I'm going to put just a little bit more salt. That's a lot of meat to season. I'm going to add some garlic powder. And I'll probably put about the same amount. I've done this long enough, I can pretty much shake it out and tell you what it is. I'm going to put some onion powder. And yeah, my onion powder, I don't know why it does that, but I have to break it up. About the same amount of onion powder. I know I've got onions in, but that onion powder just gives it a little bit of different flavor. I'm going to put some parsley. Parsley just freshens it up and makes it pretty. I have dried parsley, and I'm going to put a good, uh, that's not quite a tablespoon, not quite a full tablespoon, and I'm going to shake a little bit of paprika in it because I like it. You can use smoked paprika if you want. So I've got about the same amount of each in there. Now, we're going to add some breadcrumbs. You can use flour if you want to. I just like the breadcrumbs. I wouldn't use panko. You can use Italian. These I had original. and uh, so, But I'm going to put a little half and half for some moisture. And then we're going to bake it. I've got some gloves. I'm going to put on some gloves before I mix it up. And that way I don't have to stop and go back and scrub my hands. I can just take these gloves off and go right back to what I'm doing. We're going to have some mashed potatoes with this, and we're going to have some Brussels sprouts, and I'm going to make some fried, y'all have seen me make fried green tomatoes. Well, these tomatoes are tucked a little bit between green and red. They're not quite ripened, but they're not completely green, and they are delicious cooked that way. Okay, so I took a pan, a sheet pan, and I lined it with aluminum foil, and then I sprayed it real good with a non-stick cooking spray. You want it to come off of the pan, right? Noisy. Okay, so then I'm going to take this 
and put it on my pan here and shape it into a loaf. That's what it's called, right? Now, that is going to be delicious. And I'm going to have one happy husband tonight. Now, I think I've told y'all before, I don't like meatloaf. But I like it when I make it this way with the brown gravy. I think it's the ketchup. And I like ketchup. See? Now, we're going to put it in this preheated oven. And I'm going to set my timer there you go, for about 40 minutes, and then I'm gonna check it for doneness. In the meantime, let's start some mashed potatoes. And I know you've seen me do them before, but we wanna make some more tonight. Yeah, I um, did an interview today for the local radio station. And <laughs> it's been so funny, we've had some donkeys roaming through our neighborhood. Y'all saw my video the other night. If you didn't, go check it out. I did a uh, live video of the donkeys in our backyard. Well, they keep coming back to visit. It's just two of us, so we don't need a whole lot of potatoes. But you know what I've always told you you can do with leftover mashed potatoes, and that's make potato patties. They're so easy to make. You need them left over and cold. So let me finish getting this one peeled up. It looks like I'm peeling so much away, doesn't it? But um, I'm not. I'm peeling kind of thin. So let's get this rinsed. That didn't take but a second. And let me, I forgot the knife. Let me get them cut up. I'm gonna cut them up. I'm not gonna cut, I'm not gonna leave them big. I wanna cut kind of small. And you see how, about how small I'm cutting it. And that way they just cook quicker. So let me get finished getting these cut up. I'm going to get them covered up with some water and I'm going to put them on the stove and get them a boiling and then we'll be back and we're going to show you how to cook those back, tomatoes. I've got okay. my potatoes on the stove. I covered them with water. I salted it real good and I like to salt my potatoes when I cook them and that way that salt gets all in that potato and it just gives it extra yumminess instead of salting them after the fact. And you can do that. I've started cutting up my tomatoes. As you can see, they're not quite ripe, but they're not totally green yet either. So what I've done is, now I sliced off the top and you see the center core right here? That's not tasty. I cut that out. But I'm gonna cut it in half if you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to cut it like this in wedges. Then I'm going to cut the wedges in half. Put them over in my bowl. Put it in here. I like to do them in wedges like this, and they cook quicker. You're not standing there turning individual slices of tomato, which is how. If you've had them and cooked them, that's how we've all grown up with. I've learned this little trick from another YouTuber watching. So, yeah, I think we've got enough. This is a pretty bowl of partially green tomatoes, isn't it? So, but we want to season them up. We want to, we want them tasty. So I'm going to salt them. Tomatoes love salt and pepper. So we're gonna do that. Now, I like to use cornmeal. You can use flour. You can use a combination of cornmeal and flour. Now I've got my pan over here getting hot because I'm gonna fry them right here where you can see what we're doing. That's about that deep in oil, maybe a quarter of an inch. Is that a quarter of an inch? And, um, 
So let's let oil get hot. And I'm going to coat these in some cornmeal. We'll see if that's enough. If it's not, that was, um, these scoops are about half a cup. And that wasn't a full scoop, but as you see, we don't have that many tomatoes. So just under a half a cup. So let's, uh, let's put just a little bit. It'll be all right if we do it now. We compromise when we cook, right? Oh, yes. Now it's really sticking to it. So I'm going to add, I'm going to toss a little bit more cornmeal on top of it. See, you can always fix everything in there. Ooh -wee. Good. Now that's better. That is better, better, better. Mm. See what it looks like now? Okay. So let me rinse my hand again. So we've got our potatoes boiling, our meatloaf's in the oven, and this is, we've been, what, 15 minutes? I don't think we've been that long. And we've got dinner almost all the way. I'm doing some Brussels sprouts, which tonight we're having frozen Brussels sprouts and we'll put them in the microwave. Nothing wrong with it. Take your shortcuts where you can. If you're a working mom or uh, you work, you come in every day, you need shortcuts, right? I'm going to get these cooked. And I'm going to come back in a minute. And I'm going to show you what they look like. And uh, we may even have to taste one before dinner time. And before Our potatoes are done. And I have drained them. Put them back in the pot. Let them dry a little bit. Because you don't want all that water where you boil them in there. You don't want all of that liquid. So I'm going to put a good... Oh, I'm putting about mm, three tablespoons of butter. We love butter. Y'all know that. And we're going to, I like to use the whisk attachment on my mixer. I just think it makes it creamier. I hope it's not too loud. I just think it makes them creamier. It creams them up. Well, look, oh, look who just come in. Hello. Hello. I love you Can you smell something good in the... Uh, what in the world is this? It looks good. It is a slightly ripened green tomato mm. that I'm frying up. Homemade mashed potatoes. And I got a surprise in the oven for you. It's a meatloaf. There you go. He loves meatloaf, oh, I've told y'all. So, I'm glad you came in to say hey to everybody. <laughs> and that is not near, it's creamy, but we're gonna add some buttermilk. They're too, too thick. You like buttermilk in the mashed potatoes, don't you? Well, when we add buttermilk and when we add sour cream. You know me, I drink buttermilk. You do, and I don't. We're going to try those when we take them up. They look good. Yes, I'd love to use the whisk attachment. So let's see if it's got enough salt in it. I'll let you be the taste good tester on that. Here. See if it's got enough salt. A little bit more. A little bit more salt. No, it's perfect. Perfect? Yeah. Okay. And see, and that's something, you can always add salt at the table. It may be too much for you. It may be perfect for you and not enough for the next person. So we're going to cover these up, and we're going to set them on the stove and keep them hot. I've got to turn these. They're not going to be long and we're going to be ready to eat. As soon as I get these up, we're going to make some brown gravy and we're going to come back and then we'll make a plate because we'll be ready to eat. And I'll see you guys in just a few minutes, okay? We just took the tomatoes up and I can't wait to taste them. And then we're going to make some gravy, brown gravy, for this beautiful meatloaf that we just took out of the oven. You want a tomato? Let's try it. Sure. Let's try it. I hope they've cooled off enough. 
There's you one. Thank you. Oops. And here's. <laughs> you got my fork upside down because it's falling. <laughs> here's me one. Yeah, can you see that beautiful tomato? Look at that. Mmm. Let's try this tomato. You didn't try yours, haven't you? Mm -hmm. There they are. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Mm. It's good, isn't it? Yeah. Mindless. This is delicious. Absolutely. Mm, you've got to try them. So, let me get set up, and we're going to make some gravy for this, okay? All we have left now is to make some gravy for this beautiful meatloaf. I've got the Brussels sprouts in the microwave. I told you we took a shortcut and did a frozen one. So, they'll be out. I'll take them out in just a minute. I want to make sure. Will you make sure those um, Brussels sprouts are hot? Oh. They're in the microwave. He's such a good helper to me, y'all. Um. Okay, so I've got my pan here getting hot, and I've put, oh, uh, maybe just shy of two tablespoons of oil, and I'm going to put just shy of two tablespoons of flour, because you want your flour and fat ratio the same. One to one on flour and fat. And you want to stir that? Sure. I think we need just a tad more flour. It's not quite pasty enough. You'll know it's supposed to be pasty. And I'm sure most of you know how to make gravy. We're going to make a brown gravy to go with. That's looking good, in it? I'm going to put a little salt and pepper in there while you're stirring it up. Again. Okay, so, now I've got some brown gravy mix that I like to put in there turn with. Down. Turn it down just, just a little bit. Okay. Oh, okay, because that doesn't get real as hot as the stove does. And I'm going to put about a tablespoon, maybe two tablespoons of this brown gravy mix. And then we want it real beefy. We're making beef. And it's going to get pasty. Mm -mm, not yet. And I've got some beef bouillon. I went shy on the salt. And we're putting some beef bouillon because it's salty. <laughs> this may surprise you and it may not. You've probably seen me use it before. Balsamic vinegar. It beefs up. Good wording. Beefs up the beef gravy. It just does something to it and gives it a richness, but you have to be very careful sparing with it because it can be too strong. I think. You may not. It's strong. <laughs> it's the vinegar. Now. Opened up my Yes. So what you want to do is let that flour cook a couple of minutes to get that raw taste out of it because you don't want the raw taste in your gravy or anything. Okay, now I'm going to pour in some of this beef stock. You keep stirring while I pour it in. Now it's looking good. Now it's looking like gravy, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. So while we're getting this gravy together, we're going to pause for a minute, let that gravy cook for just a minute, and we'll be back. We're going to pull it together, and we're going to make a plate, and we're going to show you what it looks like, okay? We have the gravy ready, and i tell you what I'm going to do. I've got the meatloaf on this beautiful platter. I'm going to slice this up a couple of slices. Are you ready for a meatloaf supper? I am so ready. Looky here. Can you see this? Tomorrow I'll have a meatloaf sandwich. Can, that's right. Can you see this? Oh, it's hot. Can you see the juices that are in the middle of that meatloaf? Because I didn't overbake it. I started it out at 40 minutes, like I told you. and then But I did come back, and I added about 10 minutes to it. And that's all I added. Now, what we're going to do is I'm going to take this beautiful gravy that he stirred up. 
and I'm going to put it on this platter. Look, I'm going to put it all around this meatloaf. And then we're going to pour it on our slice of meatloaf when we fix our plates. What do you think about that? Oh, yeah. What would you say we make us a plate? Sounds good. Sound good to I'm you? I'm make it for you. There you go. I don't know. Get him a good picture of that. So here's what I want to do. Okay. Let's see. Let me get a spoon for our potatoes. And we'll get a fork for our meatloaf. How about that? Let me fix this plate. No, you just sit down. He always wants to make my plate, and I want to make his. It's so tender. It's coming apart. It is falling apart, isn't it? Like you said, it is very tender. Ooh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. That way. Let's get some of them good old mashed potatoes right up against that meatloaf. And we're going to put some extra gravy on top of it. Looky there. You got to make the lid, didn't you? <laughs> Make the little well. Mm -hmm. Now, looky here. Can you get a prettier plate than that? I don't think so. And see that beautiful piece of meatloaf on that plate? I'm going to give this to you. Maybe. There you go. I'm going to give this to you, and I want you to taste that meatloaf while I make my plate. Once I start, it won't stop. Uh, it's all right. Oh, and see, I can slice up the rest of this meatloaf and let it sit in this gravy on this platter. Mmm. I tell them I'm not a meatloaf fan, but I like it like this with the gravy. And you tell me what you think about it. I love mashed potatoes. Absolutely delicious. Is it good? Mm -hmm. Did we do good? Very well. Put us some tomatoes on here. I'm going to reach over you and get me some gravy. Mmm. And we're going to enjoy our meat love dinner tonight. Thank you for joining us tonight. We certainly appreciate each and every one of you. And we want to enjoy our meatloaf, and we hope you enjoy our meatloaf. And if you try it, please let us know. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate every one of you. Come back and see us again soon. Bye, everybody.